I am Zarina Dimitrova, a strategic partner and mentor to businesses in the process of transformation. Join me on Grow and Learn as we explore a range of topics from personal development and career advancement to relationship building and financial management. With practical advice, inspiring stories and expert interviews, we'll give you the tools you need to thrive in every aspect of your life. Join us as we share insights and strategies that can help you achieve your personal and professional growth objectives. Welcome to the Grow and Learn podcast. This is Zorina, your host. Welcome to everybody listening on Heal and Learn. Today, I am welcoming Nancy Erickson, who is an expert on writing books. I know that you know that a lot of coaches are publishing books. I want to know the secrets behind books writing. I want to know why this is important, what drives people to read these kinds of books. So, Nancy... <laughs> Take it away. Why are books important? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your podcast, Serena. Why are books important? Well, you know that people who are really well read are very effective in society and in their work. But there's a, a kind of a shift in the value of books. Now, a lot of people think, oh, books are going away because we have ebooks and stuff. Nothing could be further than the truth. People are more and more hungry for stories of others who have maybe been through something or overcome something or have survived something or developed something and have come through victorious. And I also find that the more fractured, I guess I would say, because we live in such a digital society where a lot of our contacts are surface level that people love to dive into books to really hear about somebody else. And so they are making connections, deeper connections than they are in other parts of their, of their lives. So books are really important. Um, the re I own two book related businesses. One is called the book professor, and that's where we help our clients to write what we call high impact nonfiction books. And those are books that will either save lives change lives or transform society. The other business I own is uh, Stonebrook Publishing, which is an award-winning nonfiction publishing house here in the United States. And so the people that we work with that come through our program in the book professor are automatically um, invited to publish with Stonebrook Publishing. We also publish many other authors' nonfiction books. And they have to go through a pretty extensive qualification process, you know, to be accepted. But when we work with an author, we know how their material has been developed and that it's going to be a strong message that's going to appeal to what our niche is, which is these high impact nonfiction books. Mm -hmm. How long have you been in business for? I, I read you were uh, previously in uh, technology sales in Oracle, IBM. How um, long have you been in the I've been doing this about... 17 years and I start off you know you mentioned that my this is my second career my uh, my original career like you said was in high tech when I worked for IBM and Oracle but about 17 years ago I, I made a shift and what prompted that was that my my father was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor and we knew he would only live about seven months which is pretty textbook and so I quit everything and went to be with my parents during that time. And so when I came home, instead of having that feeling like, oh my gosh, now what am I going to do? It was, I, it was more like, oh, now I can do anything I want because I was, you know, the world was open to me and mm -hmm. I take us really stressful. I just really didn't like it anymore. So I thought, now what do I, what do I want to do? And so I thought I've always loved to write. And I think I want to hone those skills. So I was looking through college catalogs of courses I could take. And I thought, I'm not going to do that. I, I've already done those undergraduate courses. So I ended up going back to school and getting a master's degree in writing. And uh, the program was two years. And when I graduated, the university where I received my degree asked me to, to teach. And so I started teaching writing. And at the same time, I formed Stonebrook Publishing, the nonfiction publishing house. And it, it's an interesting kind of a journey because the first book we published 
was amazing. It was written by a Holocaust survivor who had gone to school with Anne Frank. And we ended up doing the book release at their school in Amsterdam, which you're in Vienna. So Amsterdam's not very far, but Amsterdam is really, really far from St. Louis, Missouri, where I am. And it was a, it was a huge, amazing um, opportunity. So um, the second book we published, we ended up getting back cover endorsements from Sir Paul McCartney and Cindy Crawford. And I was just like pinching myself. I'm like, wow, I really know what we're doing. I mean, we're obviously doing a good job because people don't lend their names to things that aren't professional, especially about not Paul McCartney. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there was a problem. And the problem was that we were getting a lot of manuscripts that had a seed of what we were looking for, which was material that would save lives or change lives or transform society. And they had a seed of that, but they were so poorly written that we couldn't do anything with it. We couldn't publish it. Certainly we couldn't even edit our way out of it. So I kind of, I took a step back for about a year and didn't publish anything. And during that time, I wrote a step-by-step-by-step-by-step-by-step process so that people who aren't writers could become authors of these high impact nonfiction books. And so that gave rise to the business I referred to as the book professor. And we, we take you all the way from your idea, just your idea. All you have to have is an idea to planning it out and writing your first draft and then polishing it up and editing it, publishing it and distributing your professional book product worldwide. Amazing. Let's talk about this now. What is the process? How, how do you do you consult people? Is there a ready course? How do people work with you that want to publish yeah. a book? Most people, well, I work with people on a one-to-one -one basis, but the most popular way is we have these group masterminds and they're small. They're like three to five people. And what the, uh, each week, the uh, writer would logs into the client portal on my website and there's a video training for that week and then there's homework to download and work on during the week and then every week after you do your homework we're on a one hour mastermind call with the whole cohort talking about what you did that week and it starts with just the planning part and then you know all through the writing but the way we always start is with a series of foundational questions that help you to crystallize your message. And they're questions like, you know, why are you even doing this? What's your motivation? Who specifically is your audience and how will they be changed as a result of taking in your message? So there's 12 of these questions and we take the answers to those and we distill them down into a purpose statement for your book that says, the purpose of this book is to do this particular thing to this for this specific audience period. And that is so foundational to everything in your book because you can't you can't put everything you know in a book. You can't. You have to have a way to prioritize the material that's going to be in your book. And so that helps us to do that. Then the process that I developed, we we move on from there. And uh, it's a process called book mapping. And a book map is a visual representation of everything that's going to be in your book. And there are two different forms of this. The first is your own personal story. And here's the thing is that um, people really can't learn from you if they don't know you. And so we have a, a, a somewhat of a formula for you to use to tell your story. And usually that ends up being maybe the introduction to your book. But, you know, in a book, you're not normally going to ever meet the reader, but you have to be able to connect with them through your writing. And so we teach you how to do that. And so usually that just letting them know how who you are and how you came to be where you are right now in offering them this message. The chapter book map is uh, uh, 
organized in a different way. And we always do it in problem solution sets where you name the problem that your audience is likely to have. And then through a very story driven methodology, you present your solutions because so you're telling stories, 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 because <laughs> the truth is, if if you don't keep the reader reading, they're never going to get to your message. So you have like three different you know aims here. You have to educate and inform, but you also have to entertain your reader to keep them reading. And so during the storytelling process, it's a little bit where you can let them know a little bit more about you and stories, maybe things you've done right and things you've done wrong that all builds toward solving the problem of that chapter. So that's, you know, that's how we work. And, and the, I think the thing that my clients really appreciate is they don't know how to do it and they don't, you don't have to know, you don't come to us with anything already written. It's just an idea. But the beauty of the way that we construct your book and those problem solution sets is that when you're finished, you have all these chapters and each one solves a problem. And so you should be able to take every one of those chapters and repurpose the material for other revenue producing products. For example, you could do keynote speeches or seminars or workshops or blog articles or online training or video courses. There's a lot of potential there. That, that, and as you do that, it helps you to build your brand and to, uh, well, everybody's not going to read your book. I, you know that everybody in your audience, but why don't you meet your market where they're already engaged? Mm -hmm. And so when you repurpose that material, that gives you that opportunity. How long does it take to go through the, the process of, of the course? And do people actually write, do the authors write the book while yes. they're in the course? Yeah. They do. They write the book and we give you. So in um, I, I was talking about logging in and doing the it's like an online course, but mm -hmm. it's every week you're on a mastermind with your your coach, which often is me and the other people. So in that whole first module, we're planning out the entire book in these book maps. The second module is where I put on my professor hat and teach you how to write really compelling, creative nonfiction. And so I'm teaching you how to write and people are coming to us with various levels of ability, but you are going to surprise yourself. You are going to so surprise yourself at how good you really are. Mm -hmm. And then the whole third module is called polish and, per and perfect. And that's where we um, take your draft and then we would just really scrub it and polish it and make it really crisp and professional. That whole process takes a year. Mm -hmm. And I have had people say to me a year, why does it take so long? And there, there are actually two reasons. I, you know, I know you've probably heard this, write your book in a weekend or 30 days. I don't know what people are writing when they're doing that, but we are, are helping you to develop a, a complex professional product that has many layers to it. And there's a couple things at work here. For, the first is everyone we work with are busy professionals. They're not going to quit their day job to write a book. And it's somewhat, I mean, they don't write themselves. It's somewhat time consuming. So it's chunked in a way that you can actually get it done in little bite-sized steps. Maybe even more important is this. While you're working on your book, your book is working on you. And it needs to have time to become and to breathe. And we would really like to help the book come through you and not have you pushing out everything that you know. And I, it's really hard for me to qualify that, that statement that your book is working on you, but it is. Things are going to come into your experience. Mm -hmm. It's going to create its own energy. It's gonna, you're going to remember things that need to be in there. You're going to have a lot of aha moments. And time takes time. It takes time for those things to happen. So, so, so every week you have this for a year or just at the beginning? You every have week. Every, yeah. And then at the, at the end of that, you you should have you if you do it if you actually do the work you'll have a finished book manuscript. I see. So what are the costs associated with that? A lot of people, you know, cannot. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, we're a US. I don't have an idea. What so it's in US dollars. It's three hundred and seventy-five dollars a month for twelve months. Mm -hmm. So that's forty-five hundred dollars. But what I mean, the value is certainly there. Every week, you know, there's like forty-five different instructional videos and homework for you to download. But the value of the mastermind is really hard to underestimate. I just don't want you to underestimate that. When you're face to face with a group of people who are writing their own material, you're going to be giving them feedback on what their writing is, and they're going to be giving you feedback on yours. And what ends up happening is that as you're going through the group, and there are weeks where you're reading what you wrote to our, our group, Mm -hmm. it's going to help you to develop the confidence in yourself as a writer. And when the, in the end, when your book is out and on the market, you'll know that what you have done is really quality work. It's been vetted by others and affirmed by others. And it will really help you to, I mean, honestly, when you, your book's on the market, it's kind of like, standing naked in public with all your skin stripped off, you know, you're going to feel really vulnerable, but you're going to have, you have a group behind you who has been through every step of the way with you and you with them on their books. And you'll feel very confident in what you have done and that you have actually offered something to readers who that are, that's of value and will help them. What are some examples of books? Can you show us a few of your of, of the recent releases that you have? Yeah. So if you're if you're watching the this video part here, there's this one here is called What Lurks in the Woods. Mm -hmm. It was written by an author. All and most our authors are all first time authors. Her name is Nicole Bell. So she was an MIT brainiac and MIT is Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's the highest level of, you know, technological education. She's just a brainiac. And so, so is her husband. And so they were just rocking along in life, developing medical devices and all sorts of stuff. And, and he started getting symptoms of extreme forgetfulness and like even getting lost. And he wasn't very old. He's maybe 50 you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, she was quite a bit younger than he is, but it was weird. So of course they ended up going to the doctor and they diagnosed him with early onset Alzheimer's. Oh. Well, Nicole, she didn't believe it. And she's a scientist and into investigating things. And so she's like, this doesn't make sense. He's too young. There's no family history. And so they were taking that. I mean, there's not much to do for Alzheimer's. And so he continued to, to decline and decline and decline and decline. And eventually she understood that what had caused his illness was Lyme disease. And so Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses can be really devastating. Mm -hmm. And so her husband ended up losing all capability to recognize anyone. And he passed away about a year and a half ago. But what happened is that if he had gotten the treatment for Lyme disease at the point where he started having trouble, he would have been fine. He would have been fine. And so now Nicole is, um, she has started a startup medical uh, company where they're uh, discovering ways to test for these tick-borne illness. She's been on the Today Show and USA Today and done a lot of things. And so she has turned her tragedy into a a pursuit of solving this problem. And it, that all started with her book. Another one I'd like to mention was written by, it's called, it's this one right here. It's written by author Clay Boatwright. It's called God's Plan, Our Circus. Uh, the subtitle is A Family Odyssey Through Autism, Death, and Reinvention. So Clay had three daughters and um, he has three daughters, I should say. <laughs> Twins, an older daughter, and then twins who were born with severe autism and mental disabilities. They're not, they function at about the two-year-old level, maybe, and they're adults. But anyway, it's all about his life and how he turned that tragedy into a pursuit for him. And so he's been on all kinds of, uh, President Obama had appointed him on different commissions for disabilities and all sorts of things. And so he 
turned his life into a advocacy, one of advocacy and support for um, handicapped individuals. So that book has done really well, but it also offers parents of autistic children a lot of hope and help and understanding. And so those are just two examples of, of some of our more recent publications. Mm -hmm. And what are the, um, the spheres of the nonfiction books? Well, these were more health yeah. related are there is it mostly personal well, development? health related yeah okay so we kind of divide our our categories or the genres of nonfiction into we do a lot of business books a lot of people who are coaches or speakers or small business owners that they want to get the word about what they do out to the public and so we do a lot of those books these category of book, it sounded like they were health related, which they were, but I, they kind of fall into what I call the overcomer crack category mm -hmm, Somebody mm -hmm. who has been through something and it's been awful and it's been really hard and they felt like they weren't going to make it, but they did. And so now they just want to kind of reach back and help others who might be in that or a similar situation. And really, Zarina, all of our books are intended to do, to offer people two things that I think they can't live without. And those two things are hope and help. And when you simply tell your story, what you've been through, what you've discovered, what you've overcome, what you've gleaned, then you become the source of those two things mm -hmm. and can have a bigger impact than you may even realize. Yeah. So Nancy, I've actually heard that uh, to publish a book um, is not very profitable, that you're actually profiting from, as, a, as, a, as an author, from the um, um, adjacent businesses around having this yes. book. So uh, coaching, speaking yes. engagements. Yes, I agree with that. that that's mm -hmm. correct. Unless it, you're, you know, a known author and, and such, but... Um, a lot, most of our clients are, um, they have the desire to help others. And, and so like some things that I told you about, like with Nicole, she started this whole, um, she's like the go-to person now for Lyme disease and tick-borne illnesses. Clay Boatwright on his book that references his autistic da daughters has some coaching and helping, you know, things that he can feed people into. But you're right. You you may not you may not get your money back in book sales. Yeah. But I often tell our clients, how many new clients do you need to get to um, justify the cost of this? How many people do you need to help? How many speaking engagements do you need to get, et cetera? So you're not most people don't start making. I mean, this is just a general rule of thumb for authors. You don't start making any money off the book until about their fourth book. Mm -hmm. So you need to know that up front. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up, Zarina. So let's establish what your goals are for the book and, mm -hmm. and aim our efforts toward that. Yeah. So, so most books are physically distributed then. Uh, is your company uh, Stonebrook uh also in the distribution business or when you publish it is does yeah. that is this where your work stops or how does it continue okay so what happens is that we distribute through ingram publisher service which is an international company it's the largest book distributed book distributor in the world they distribute it worldwide mm -hmm. and so their customers are amazon or barnes and noble or powell's books or something like that but it's distributed worldwide um, you know, print books and ebooks and print books are for a while, ebooks were climbing in popularity. That's kind of backed off. And now print books are surging again. I think people got, people are feeling a little too electronic these days. I, yeah. think. <laughs> I can testify to that myself. <laughs> I, I, I have no patience to read an ebook. I know I, I can't stare at another screen at, yeah. you know, on my off time. Mm -hmm. Um, Audiobooks are extremely popular, and um, we um, we have a partner for that because there's a lot of different production materials and studios involved. But 
when you're doing an audio book, we, we always suggest that the author kind of let go of the idea of recording it themselves and to use a voice actor. And so our partners have, they have voice actors that will audition for your book and you get to choose the one you like, but here's the reason why they're, they're actors, they're vocal performers. Mm -hmm. And when you read your own book, unless you have had professional voice training, you're not going to be crisp in your diction. You're not going to be uh, kind of level out your accent if you have one so that everybody can understand you. Yeah. And particularly for women, we have to be really careful and learn to drop our voice or register so that we don't sound squeaky and mm -hmm. irritating. Right. Voice actors automatically do that. And it's actually going to cost you less than if you go into a studio and take all the studio time and they're having to, you know, re-record and back up and fix your pronunciation and things like that. But audiobooks are really popular. In fact, because I read books all the time for work, I never read a book when I'm not working, but I consume a lot of audiobooks. So that's a wonderful way to um, engage with more readers. Yeah. So um, now with the whole AI advancement, it's overwhelmed us, but I, I know that I've been offered uh, an AI solution for writing books. So there's this thing coming as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know how it competes with what you're offering and whether oh, yes. I mean, I have a very strong opinion on that. Yeah. And share, share, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's start off with what I hope the foundation of your business is. I hope it's integrity. I hope it's about being honest and, and being um, upfront with everybody. Your book should do three things for you. It should establish you as an expert. It should increase your credibility and it should help you attract a following. But just imagine what would happen to your credibility if you issue this book that's computer generated and people find out you didn't even write it. Oh, and also you can't copyright that material because you didn't write it, an AI generated book. I, I have... Oh, you know, I, I have a very emotional reaction to that. People don't want to interact with a computer. They want you. Mm -hmm. They want you. And so what we do when we're working it with you is we, we help to pull your story out of you. And a computer can't do that. It doesn't know you. It can just write about topics that you feed into it. But we work a lot with our writers to inject the personal, emotional side of your story into your book. And we I, I'm kind of scared of AI. I mean, I mean, yeah. of the things that I'm hearing about where it's going, I'm like, mm -hmm. where are the people? Where are the people? Now, I do think there's a place for AI in writing, maybe in blog posts or articles that you're doing, but not when you're putting yourself forward as this expert, because you are the expert and let's let's let us help you to pull that expertise out of that so that you can really shine and be authentic and and show your expertise and your integrity to the world great yes um i i, I wish this is indeed so but um, just i don't know I, I'm, I'm always cautious uh, with AI because I have personally seen how how much it's, uh, it's advanced. I've been using ChatGPT since the very beginning to test it out. And now I can see that it's pulling, it's able to, you, you can um, teach it and it's pulling the essence of what you want to say. It's really, it, it's scary at times. And also I read uh, one book, it's called um, uh, Immortal. I don't know if you've heard, it's, it's about AI and a part of it is fiction, a part of it is actually um, true. So real things that had happened with AI and the, I mean, it, it's not the subject of the, of this talk anyhow, but, right, yeah, but I mean, uh, but, but it is somehow because it, it's touching the, the entire industry of publishing, of internet, yes. of yeah. you know, communications in general. 
And yes. um, the thing is, it becomes so complex in the in in the way of its thinking, so to say, because it, it also has neurons, you know, yes. AI. It it pulls information from various places. It's not one contained. Maybe right. Chat GPT is, but it has the cap capability of pulling further information. Out, yeah. yeah, right. So at some point it starts and it may have already, but may, we may not be informed. It starts gaining consciousness of its own. Yes. So it starts thinking without prompts. And what, the is, part. And what is it? You know? yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, mm, I understand your point. I also want to keep it more uh, human. Yeah. Let's see how, how things yeah, are going. Okay, is that, that we are humans. Yeah. We interact with humans and we um, we we need to connect with humans. I mean, I think probably one of our basic needs as a person is connection. And um, you can help your readers to, to connect with you by telling your story. And here's the truth of it. You're the only one who has your story. So you're the only one who can do it. And a, a lot of times people are like, well, you know, I'm just had an ordinary life. And I'm like, are you kidding? You've done this, this, and this. And they're like, who am I to write a book? And I'm like, oh my gosh, who are you to keep that to yourself? Let's get your message out of you into the world where it can do its work. And we help you every step of the way. How many books have you published so far with the Stonebrook uh, Publishing? I wish I knew. Um, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> my walls are full of book covers. So I've lost, I, I guess I haven't kept count, you know, but we've done hundreds of books and we're, you know, have a backlog of that are coming out in the, over the next few months as well. And it's such a pleasure to me, to me, um, to be able to pull th those stories out of you so that you can really see the value that your life has when you share it with others. Mm -hmm. Is there a transformational story that you've witnessed of somebody who has taken the course and written a book? Um, well, I think uh, I do want to say that there's a kind of in this overcomer book, there's a transformation that often happens within the writer. And one of the things that might be common to a lot of these types of book is that, is that the, the writer experienced some type of trauma that they're still dealing with. And, you know, trauma that you experience in childhood sticks with you. It's not like it goes away when you turn 21 or anything like that. But what I found is when the writers approach their story and write their story, it's almost like it's the last time they have to tell that story. You know, they'll go through all the emotions of getting it out, but then they can say, this is what happened to me. Here's how I'm thriving now. And it kind of puts a lid on it. It's a cathartic process. Um, it may hurt a little bit while they're going through it because they're kind of reliving some of the things. But when you can actually get it out of you and get it on paper, it's not just therapeutic. It's kind of the final word on it. And for many of our authors it just it doesn't hurt anymore this has been a tremendous pleasure nancy where can people reach you if they want to work with you yeah um so we're I, i'm we're starting one of these cohorts in a few weeks i would love to have your audience join us you can go to my website thebookprofessor.com and remember we're talking about books and i was a university professor so it's the book professor Across the top navigation, there's a link that says schedule a call with Nancy. Just click on that. You'll have access to my calendar and be able to find a time that works for you that will chat about your book ideas and and um, let you um, join, jump in on our on our next cohort. I promise you it's going to be very rewarding. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nancy. Good Thank stories, you. amazing um, outlook on, on what books, book publishing does for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Grow and Learn. We hope that you found our podcast informative, engaging, and inspiring. 
Our mission is to help you keep growing and learning, and we hope that our conversations and insights have provided you with practical advice and useful perspectives. If you're looking for personalized support and guidance to help you achieve your personal or professional growth objectives, I offer a range of services to help. As a trusted management partner and mentor, I work with businesses in the process of transformation, looking for new streams of business, as well as M&A. With an extensive professional network of experts and mentors, I can bring on board the right person or team based on the specific needs of the company I'm working with. To learn more about the services I offer and how I can help you achieve your goals, visit my website at growandlearn.org. You can also reach out to me via email or social media. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this episode of Grow and Learn, please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Your feedback is important to us and it helps us to continue to create content that is relevant and valuable to our listeners. Thanks again for listening and we look forward to sharing more insights and perspectives with you in the future.